Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Sandhi in Paninian Grammar. In this lecture, we study Visarga Sandhi. So far, we have studied Ach Sandhi and also Hal Sandhi. Now, we start studying Visarga Sandhi. What is a Visarga Sandhi? Visarga Sandhi is a Sandhi in place of a Visarga. So, we know that Visarga is a substituent or Sthani and in its place sounds are substituted. So, we have Visarga as an input, as a Sthani and X refers to those substitute sounds, they are the Adeshas. This is called Visarga Sandhi. Let us talk about Visarga. Visarga is not listed in the 14 sutras that appear at the beginning of the Ashtadhyayi, nor is it listed in the basic inventory, the traditional inventory also known as Matrika Patha. It is always described as a substitution itself. So, Visarga itself is a substitution. What is the substituent then? So, the substituent of a Visarga is always R, which comes at the end of a Pada. And this happens only in a limited right hand side environment namely Khar and Avasana. Khar refers to the class 1 and 2 consonants and also sh, sh and s. Avasana is the absence of any sound. So, if you have this situation where r comes at the end of this pada and is followed by either a khar or an avasana, either one of the consonants mentioned in this particular pratyahara or the absence of any sound. In such a case, this R is substituted by Visarga. So, R plus Khar or Avasana is the input and the output is Visarga plus Khar or Avasana. This is affected by the Sutra Khar Avasana Yor Visarjaniyaha 8.3.15. This is a very important feature of the Visarga. Visarga is also known as Visarjaniya. Let us look at some of the other features of Visarga. Visarga is known as Visarjaniya also used in the Sutras of Ashtadhyayi. Visarga or Visarjaniya is written with these symbols, two dots or two filled small circles after a letter. That is why they do not have any independent grapheme as well. In Roman it is written with a dot below H. Visarjaniya or Visarga is traditionally recognized and described as Ayoga Vaha as well, which means that it is always uttered together with A. a Yoga Vaha. So, one which is carried in association with A. A here stands for any vowel. So, the point is that this Visarjaniya is uttered always together with a vowel preceding. It cannot be uttered independently, alone, and it always occurs at the end of a Pada. These are some important features of Visarga. Let us look at some phonetic description of Visarga in terms of its place of articulation and also the effort of articulation. According to Paninian grammatical tradition, the place of articulation of Visarga is Kantha, Akuha Visarjaniyanam Kanthaha. 
and the effort of articulation or prayatna is shwasa, aghosha, vivara and mahaprana. So why visarga sandhi is stated separately and why is it not included in the chapter of hal sandhi because this is not uh, ach. So this is the question. We can say that visarga sandhi can be said to be part of hal sandhi as well. But because of the speciality of the sound and the speciality of the substitution and the focus of description, it is treated separately in a separate chapter. This is the reason why we have a separate chapter called Visarga Sandhi in the Paninian grammatical tradition. When we study Visarga Sandhi, we will study following sutras. Karavasanayor Visarjaniyaha 8315, Visarjaniyasya Saha 8334, Sharpare Visarjaniyaha 8335, Vashari 8336, Kuppokkah Paucha 8337 and then these other ones, Sopadadau 8338, Inashaha 8339, Namas Purasor Gatyoho 8340, Idudupadhasya Chapratyayasya 8341, Tirasonya Tarasyam 8342, Dvistrish Chaturiti 8343, Isuso Samarthi 8344, Nityam Samase Anuttaravadasthasya 8345 Ataha, Kru, Kami, Kamsa, Kumbha, Patra, Kushakarnishu, Anavyayasya 8346 Adhashirasi Pade 8347 and finally Kaskadishucha 8348 Even though the number of sutras is little bit more, the substitutions are not that many. So let us study these sutras one by one and understand the Visarga Sandhi in detail. In this particular lecture, we will not be dealing with the sutras mentioned on this particular slide, sutras 2. We shall be studying the sutras mentioned on this particular slide, sutras 1. Let us first of all take up the Sutra Karabasanayor Visarjaniyaha for study. This is 8315, a very important sutra. Well, this sutra has got two padas, Karabasanayor and Visarjaniyaha. Karabasanayoho is 7 slash 2 of Karabasana, where Kar means consonants 1 and 2, that is Kakha, Chacha, Tatha, Tatha and Papha plus Sha, Sha and Sa and of course Avasana. Avasana means absence of any sound. So Karavasana Yor means immediately before. And Visarjaniya is 1 slash 1 of Visarjaniya. So this is the substitute. The Padas continued from the previous sutras are Raha, which is 6 slash 1 of R, which means in place of R and Padasya, 6 slash 1 of Pada, in this case it is part of. The overall meaning of the sutra is the following. Immediately before Khar and Avasana, R at the end of a Pada is substituted by Avisarjaniya. I repeat, immediately before khar, khar means consonants 1 and 2 of the class plus sh, sh and s and avasana that is absence of sound, r at the end of a pada is substituted by 
अविसर्जनीय और अविसर्ग सो दिस पर्टिकुलर मीनिंग कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ एन इक्वेशन इन दिस मैनर सो इफ यू हैव र प्लस खर दैट इज क्लास कॉन्सोनेंट्स वन एंड टू प्लस श श एंड स दिस बींग द इनपुट एट थ्री फिफ्टीन अप्लाइज एंड द आउटपुट जनरेटेड इज विसर्ग प्लस खर एंड ऑल्सो र प्लस अवसान बींग द इनपुट द आउटपुट जनरेटेड इज विसर्ग प्लस अवसान इट इज टू बी नोटेड दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर सूत्र खरबसान और विसर्जन यहां brings about the substitution in the form of a visarga as we said before visarga as it is does not exist on its own it is always in place of r that you will find visarga and therefore visarga will find itself in the limited environment right hand side environment of khar and avasana so we also note that the sutras stating the visarga sandhi including the one that states visarga as the substitute they all appear in the asiddha section of the ashtadhyayi namely the third sub chapter of the eighth chapter 8.3 which means that the output of these sutras can not be the input for the previous section in the ashtadhyayi however we see that in the swadhi sandhi section we come across sutras where we find an exception to this particular principle but we shall deal with it later on when we deal with the swadhi sandhi right now let us focus on the examples where r plus khar is the input and visarga plus khar is the output so first let us take ramar and khanati so this r comes in in place of the suffix s so we have rama plus s and then s gets substituted by r and we shall study this sutra in detail in the swadhi sandhi section so ramar plus khanati is the input now this r which comes at the end of a pada is followed by kh which is a khar so 8315 applies and this r gets substituted by the visarga and so the output generated is ramah khanati similarly ramar plus phanati and this p is khar so this r is followed by khar and therefore 8315 applies and the output generated is ramah phanati similarly ramar plus chinatti and this r then is substituted by a visarga and so the output generated is ramah chinatti then we have ramar plus thakuraha and the output generated is ramah thakuraha then ramar plus tharvati and the output generated is ramah plus tharvati then ramar plus ch and the output generated is ramah plus ch finally ramar plus tikate and the output is ramah and tikate the derivation process does not stop here neither did it start here we are dealing with the intermediary process it begins with ramas kanati so becomes r and now this r becomes a visarga and then this visarga is going to be substituted by the other sutras which we are going to precisely study under the visarga sandhi section but this is the background visarjaniya sya saha will come on top of this particular background and the other sutras let us continue looking at the other sutras of r plus khar being the input 8315 karavasana or visarjaniya applies and visarga plus khar being the output that is generated so we have ramar plus tatra and the output generated is ramah tatra ramar plus karoti 
and the output generated is Ramah Karoti. Ramar plus Pati is the input and the output generated is Ramah Pati. Ramar plus Sharanam and the output generated is Ramah Sharanam. Ramar plus Shashtaha and the output is Ramah Shashtaha. And finally, Ramar plus Martavyaha and the output is Ramah Smartavyaha. In all these cases, R is followed by one of the Khar sounds and so R gets substituted by the Visarga. Let us take a look at a few examples where R is followed by Avasana and that becomes an input and A315 applies and the output generated is Visarga plus Avasana. So for example, you have Ramas and then S becomes R and you have Ramar and because there is nothing else that follows and this is indicated by the vertical bar given after the word Ramar. This means that this is the closed word, this is the boundary, there is nothing that follows Ramar and so because there is Avasana over here, so this R will now be substituted as Visarga Ramaha. Now there is no scope for this to be substituted any further by any other sound. Similarly, Ramar, this is 1 slash 3 and this will be once again substituted as Ramaha. So, R at the end of the Pada and following is the Avasana and R is substituted by Visarga. Similarly, Ramair, this is 3 slash 3 and once again there is no sound coming after, Avasana coming after. So, this R is substituted by the Visarga Ramaihi. Similarly, <coughs> Ramebhyar is the input and the output generated would be Ramebhya. This would be the 4 slash 3 as well as the 5 slash 3. This is in case of the word Rama as a Pratipadika. If we look at the other Pratipadikas like Hari, we have Harir as 1 slash 1 Ra coming at the end of a Pada followed by no other sound. That means it is followed by an Avasana. So this Ra is substituted by a Visarga. So we get Harihi as the output generated. Similarly, Bhanur and Ra is substituted by a Visarga because there is nothing that follows. Similarly, Gaur. This is also 1 slash 1 of the Pratipadika Gau or Go. And then you have Gaur, Gauhu as the finally derived form. Similarly, Naur. This is 1 slash 1 of Nau. And so this Ra is substituted by a Visarga because there is nothing that follows. There is Avasana that follows. And so we get the finally derived form Nauhu. This is about Kharavasana or Visarjaniyaha. So this Visarjaniya comes in place of R. Now the Visarjaniya has arrived. Now this becomes an input and then this Visarjaniya gets substituted by various sounds. This is what is called Visargasandhi. Let us study these sutras one by one. The first sutra is Visarjaniyasya Saha. As you see, Visarjaniyasya is 6 slash 1, Saha is 1 slash 1. So, in place of a Visarjaniya, Sa is the substitute. This is the simple meaning of this particular sutra, which is the basic sutra for the Visarga Sandhi. Visarga being the substituent and something else is the substitute. In this case, Sa is the substitute. Let us study this sutra. This sutra, as we saw earlier, has got two padas, Visarjaniyasya and Saha. And the word continues in the sutra is Khari, which is 7 slash 1 of Khar. And so the meaning of the sutra is, immediately before Khar, substitute the Visarjaniya by S. I, I repeat, immediately before Khar, Khar is consonants 1 and 2, plus Sh, Sh and S. Substitute the Visarjaniya by S. So we have Visarga plus Khar as the input and the output generated is S plus Khar. 
here are the examples the same examples that we saw earlier r plus khar and the output was visarga plus khar and now this visarga plus khar becomes the input and the output generated is s plus khar so we have ramaha plus khanati this is the output this is actually the output of r plus khar now this becomes an input for visarjaniya yasya saha but there is another rule which is an exception which we shall study later on and that's why this output is put in different colors not in the usual blue color so these two we shall deal with later on let us first of all go to ramaha plus chinatti and the output generated is ramas plus chinatti so this visarga is substituted by s because this visarga is followed by ch which is a khar so ramas chinatti similarly ramaha plus thakuraha and visarga is substituted by s so we have the output ramas thakuraha there is further processing that is going to happen shtonashtu who is going to apply and is going to convert this s into something else so ramaha and tharvati and once again we have this visarga being substituted into s so ramas tharvati and we get ramas tharvati then ramaha plus ch and this visarga is substituted by s so we have ramas ch then stunashu who applies and we get ramas ch then ramaha plus tikate and we have the output ramas tikate similarly ramaha plus tatra and the output would be ramas tatra once again rama karoti and rama pati will have a different output as stated by the other sutra so we'll study that later on let us go to ramaha plus sharanam here visarga is followed by sh which is part of khar and so this visarga is first substituted by s so we have ramas plus sharanam then stunashtu who will apply then stoho stunashtu who will apply and will substitute this s by sh in case of ramaha plus shashtaha we have ramas plus shashtaha so this s they will then be substituted by sh by the application of the rule stunashtu and finally ramaha plus smartavya and the output generated is ramas smartavya this is the output of visarjaniya sya saha s is the substitute in place of the visarjaniya this is the visarga sandhi now let us study the second sutra sharpare visarjaniya 8335 this sutra has got two padas sharpare and visarjaniya and the words continued are khari and visarjaniyasya sharpare is 7/1 of sharpar which means a sound which is followed by shar shar paraha yasya khari is 7/1 of khar and khari means immediately before sharpare is the qualifier of khari so khar should be such that it is followed by shar that is the meaning that is arrived at after we combine both these words ending in the same case visarjaniya is the word mentioned in the sutra which is in 1/1 which indicates the substitute the word visarjaniyasya continues and it means in place of so the meaning of the sutra is the following immediately before khar which is followed by a shar substitute a visarjaniya by the visarjaniya so i repeat immediately before a khar and khar is class consonants 1 and 2 plus sh sh s which is followed by a shar that is sh sh and s substitute a visarjaniya by the visarjaniya so there is no other substitute that takes place only visarjaniya is the substitute so visarjaniya sya saha does not take place over here 
Thereby, no other substitution takes place. No visarjani yascha saha. For example, if we have visarga plus khar plus shar, in this environment, this visarga, which ought to have been substituted by a sir, because khar is following, this sutra applies and says, ki if the khar is followed by shar, then this visarjaniya is not to be, to be substituted by anything else but by itself. So visarjaniya is substituted by its own form. So we have visarjaniya plus khar plus shar. This is the output generated and sir plus khar plus shar is not the output that is generated. So when we have kaha plus saruhu, where this is the visarga kaha followed by ta which is a khar followed by sa which is a shar. So this is shar para khar following and so this visarga is not substituted by sa which is otherwise stated by visarjaniyasya saha and so this remains as kaha saruhu. Similarly, ghana ghanaha kshobhanaha. Here we have a visarga followed by k, followed by sh. So this can be described as sh, which is khar, which is following k, which is khar. So this is shar para khar and this is preceded by a visarga. So this visarga is not substituted by s or in this case by the jivhamuliya as stated by the sutra kupokka paucha. So in this case, kas saruhu or ghana ghanas kshobhanaha, this is invalid, this is not correct. Even the other option ghana ghana kshobhanaha, this is also not correct according to the Paninian rules. Now let us study the next sutra which suggests an option. So the sutra is Va Shari 8336. This sutra has got two words Va and Shari. Shari is 7 slash 1 of Shar immediately before Shar. Visarjaniyaha is the word that is continued. Visarjaniyasya is also continued. Va means optionally. So the meaning of the sutra is immediately before a Shar a visarjaniya is substituted by a visarjaniya optionally. So if we have a visarjaniya or a visarga followed by shar, the output generated is sir followed by shar optionally. So you can also have visarjaniya plus shar as an optional output. For example, if you have ramaha plus sharanam, Ramaha plus Sharanam is the input and we have Ramaha or Ramas plus Sharanam as the output. So the Visarga can be substituted optionally by Sa and so we have both these outputs. Similarly Ramaha plus Shashtaha, so the Visarga is substituted optionally by Sa. So Ramaha or Ramas plus Shashtaha, this is the output and Ramaha plus smartavyaha, this is the input and this visarga gets substituted by sa optionally. So ramaha or ramas smartavyaha, this is the output. Obviously in these two cases, there is further processing that happens by the sutras that come later on. So sa becomes sha by stoshtunashtuhu and sa becomes sha by shtunashtuhu. There is a Vartika statement which says that Kharpare Shari Va Visarga Lopo Vaktavyaha. Earlier we have seen the sutra Sharpare Visarjaniyaha, where we had Sharpara Khar as the right hand side environment, where we had on the right hand side Khar followed by Shar. Now in this case we have Shar followed by Khar. Kharpare Shari Va Visarga Lopo Vaktavyaha. The meaning of this vartika is immediately before a shar, which is followed by a khar, substitute zero in place of a visarga optionally. I repeat, immediately before a shar, 
which is followed by a khar substitute zero in place of a visarga optionally. So if we have visarga plus shar as the input, the output is first zero plus shar as stated by this particular sutra and then we have optionally sa plus shar and then we apply vashari. So there is another option. So there is also the visarga plus shar. So there are three options that are possible as examples of this particular vartika. For example, if we have ramaha sthata, so there is a visarga over here coming at the end of the pada followed by sa which is a shar followed by tha which is a khar. So this is khar para shar followed following a visarga. So in this case there are three possible outputs. First this visarga gets zero substitute that means this visarga is deleted. So we have rama plus sthata as the first output. The second output is this visarga gets substituted by sa. So we have ramas and sthata. And the sutra vashari says that this visarga is also substituted by itself. So we have ramaha and sthata. These three outputs are generated by this particular sutra and the vartika. Finally, we have a, an important sutra, Kupvokka Paucha, in which Jivhamuliya and Upadmaniya are mentioned as the substitutes in place of the visar, Visarjaniya. So in this sutra there are three padas, Kupoho, Kapau and Cha. Kupvoho is 7 slash 2 of Kupu, that is immediately before Ku and Pu. Kapau is 1 slash 2 of Kapa, which is a substitute. Cha means and, Visarjaniyasya is 6 slash 1 of Visarjaniya, meaning in place of. So now, the meaning of the sutra is this. Immediately before ku and pu, in place of a visarjaniya, substitute ka and pa, that is a jivhamuliya and an upadmaniya optionally. I repeat, immediately before ku and pu, respectively, in place of a visarjaniya, substitute a ka and a pa optionally. Substitute jivhamuliya and substitute visar upadmaniya optionally. Here are the examples. These are the examples that were marked in a different color earlier. So Ramaha plus Karoti where you have a Visarga followed by Ka and so now this Visarga gets substituted by a Jivha Muliya. So we have Ramah Karoti. Similarly Ramaha plus Khanati Visarga is followed by Kha. So this Visarga is substituted by a Jivha Muliya and you get Ramah Khanati as the output. Similarly, you have Ramah Pati, Ramah Pati as the input and this Visarga, now this is being followed by Pa, so this gets Upadmaniya as the output. Ramah Pati and also Ramah Phanati and the output is Ramah Phanati. To summarize, we first of all studied the features of Visarga. We also stated that Visarga is in fact a substitute and the substituent is R coming at the end of a Pada. The position at which Visarga substitution takes place is very important. It is always at the end of a Pada and there are the substitutes of the Visarga namely Sa, then Jivamuliya and Upadmaniya and also the deletion. And Visarga itself can be regarded as the substitute that replaces, replaces its own form. Next we study the remaining rules which state some other substitutes in place of the Visarga notably Sha. We shall study these sutras 
in the next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.